Today's tutorial is going to cover the Universal Forwarder. It's been requested that I explain how to install it, how to set it up, and how to get it forwarding logs. So that will be what we're going to cover today. I have downloaded the latest uh, Splunk Forwarder. My recommendation is to always download the latest version and install that for the Universal Forwarders. Splunk, especially the Universal Forwarders, really wants to run a later version than your indexers and your heavy forwarders, anything that you're interacting with, deployment servers, things like that. And thereby, if you download the latest version, you don't have to worry about that. You can go and download older versions. My recommendation, download the latest version unless there's some reason you can't use it. Um, but I downloaded 9.04, which is the latest version on Splunk at, on Splunk at this time. It's a Debian. I've done tar in the past. I'm going to do Debian this time, dpackage minus i. If I hit Splunk Forwarder and I run that, it's going to set up a Splunk instance. And if I go to CD opt, there I'll have a Splunk Forwarder. I am going to leverage my uh, log analysis made easy training. You can download that from Splunk Base. You can download the latest version of it from Git. And it's this that'll be on there. One of the things you want to go to is the reference guide I've got here. If you go to Splunk Roles, System Admin, I've got useful CLI commands. When you go in there, there will be a, a, a nice little web interface that shortcuts all the things you might need to do. And it's got the command for running Splunk Enterprise and a Splunk Forwarder. Big key is you want to be running in the op Splunk Forwarder folder. We don't have a Splunk directory. So every, every command we do, we want to grab the Splunk Forwarder example of it. The first thing I want to do is I want to enable boot start. So I'm going to just steal this. I could type it in, but I'm lazy. And if I go paste this in, it's op Splunk Forwarder bin Splunk. And that is not the command I copied. Oh, we've got a little bit of a... Uh, an error here. I'll have to fix that on the web page. I just need to, we'll just copy over this. And I'm just going to go Splunk, enable, boot start. That's the command. Validate I wrote that right. Enable boot dash start. There it is. We're good to go. It's going to prompt me to uh, install Splunk. I'm okay with that. The whole enable boot start, the principle we're trying to do is get Splunk to be able to auto start uh, even if the operating system gets rebooted. Uh, Splunk will naturally does not start until you have, unless you manually start it. But if you do the enable boot start, you'll be able to have Splunk run every time the operating system is re restarted. I'm going to create a user account for this universal forwarder. Put in a password, and now the key part here is systemd unit file install, installed, configured as systemd managed services. So it's going to it's going to automatically start this thing up. All right, we've got Splunk automatically starting up. Next thing we want to do is we want to hook it to a deployment server. If you haven't seen my videos and you're not familiar with what a deployment server is, I highly recommend getting a deployment server. It'll allow you to push out apps to any of your instances. And apps is a much, much better way of handling uh, configuration changes. Let's say you change your infrastructure. And right now you're sending, you're indexing stuff to IP address X and now it changes. You'd have to go to every individual instance and change that. That would stink. But you could do a an app on your deployment server and you make the configs there and push it out and now all of your instances will be pushing to a new system as soon as they download the latest app which they will do every so many minutes automatically so you don't have to do, uh, work with that um other things you can do is push licensing all all every all these configurations there's so much as you start to get a bigger and bigger infrastructure you don't want to be handling these things manually uh, so the first thing to do is set up that deployment server. And so we're going to do connect to a deployment server. I'm just going to copy this. We'll go over the code. 
op splunk forward or bin splunk. If you haven't noticed, this is a very common. In order to run it, you're going to run the splunk command inside your, the path of your splunk in the bin folder. And then I'm using a set deploy pole. Here, you are not going to use 192.168.1.119. This is going to be either the IP address or the domain name of your deployment server. Mine happens to be this, and you make sure you put the port in there if you're using ports, which you should be. And so I'm connecting on port 8089. And if I do this, it updates the configs. So what has that done? If I go to Splunk Etsy system local, it has created me a, de a deployment client.com file. And I can read that. And it is now pointing, saying, hey, there's your deployment server, target URI, there's your target URI. If I need to change this, I'm going to have to come in and manually change this, or I can rerun the command again, uh, the, the one I just ran, this op splunk set deploy pole. But the thing is, we don't want folders. We don't want, and I can do this for every little configuration. Like, I need to push the logs I'm uh, sending here to my indexer. I could do that here, and I will for this demo, but I highly recommend using an app. Once you've got yourself hooked up to the deployment client, all the rest of these config changes should come over from an app. You should not be building them locally. Uh, and I will go do this for this for the sake of showing how to send logs. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go grab this command, copy it. Let's just go down to opt again so that everything fits on one screen while I run this. Again, op splunk forward or bin splunk, this time add forward server 192.168.1.119. In this instance of my dev home, my forwarder, my deployment server, my indexers, my search head, they're all one standalone instance. So they all have the same IP address. In your environment, if you've got a if you got clusters and distributed environment, you're not going to always have the same IPs. But in my environment, you'll notice it's the same IP. But go ahead and put your IP address of your indexer or your uh, master node if you've got uh, uh, distributed distributed searching. Sorry, distributed indexing. And I'll show you how to do it if you want to do uh, round robin your own and you don't have your master node doing distributed indexing, I'll show you how to change that. Again, I would do it with an app, but for the sake of this, we're going to do it right here. I now, if I go to op splunk etsy system local, I had a deployment dot deployment client dot comp file. Now I have an outputs dot comp file there as well. Let's clear this out so it's easier to see vioutputs.conf. And if I wanted to go round robin to a lot of different machines, let's say I had three different indexers, I'd just come in here and I'd go 192.168.1.1299.7, This would be the concept if I had multiple indexers that I want to send to because they're a cluster or whatever you just list each one comma separate make sure you put the port in there comma separated I don't need to change this even though it's calling out this this is just a label it might make more sense to call this say index cluster but it really doesn't matter at this stage um, anyway I'm just gonna leave that as is and I'm, I don't have an indexer cluster so I'm gonna erase this now there's a problem what happens if I get an index cluster? What if I change where I'm sending these logs in? The problem is it's in et all these changes are in Etsy system local. So someone's going to have to come to the system and change it. Oh, I could have an app that says, hey, your outputs.conf needs to change. The problem is order of precedence. System files get precedence over app config files. And so even if I push an app now at this stage, my outputs.conf in Etsy system local will overrule what's pushed out in an app. That's why I recommend using an app. I will do my next uh, video 
on using the app method to push out the outputs.conf. But for now, we've got an outputs.conf here locally. We won't be using a deployment server and we'll be okay. So now the last thing we wanna do is let's just go test that I'm actually connecting there. And by the way, I don't think I will because So I already I do have it. We're good there. Okay, I'm able to reach. Oh, I copied the wrong file. Sorry. Yeah, that didn't seem right. Okay, we're going to test the connection. And this is not a test connection. That's the exact same log as over there. All right. Well, don't worry about the test connection. We can actually test that another way. First, let's go. We've put. If you're familiar with the configs, as you change them, they're not loaded into memory. And so I need to do a quick restart of Splunk. Don't worry about this little message here about changing ownership, et cetera. Okay, come on. Do, 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 do. We're going to go on Splunk, clear this out. This is odd. So I've got an ownership issue going on and it's it's fighting. It wants to run a Splunk. The problem with running Splunk on a universal forwarder is that most of the log files are going to be only accessible as an admin. And you, if you give Splunk admin rights, you defeat the purpose of having a second account. And Honestly, there's a lot of ways you can try to get around it, but it's just, you can put it in will, but the problem is then you need a sudo, and it's just really, really difficult to get to your logs. So while best practice says run the universal forwarder as Splunk, it may not work that way, and a lot of your logs would then have to be set into a location where you change the ownership so it can be accessed by Splunk, et cetera. So I'm, I'm gonna have to say that it, there's not a great method here. You're just going to have to deal with the, the good with the bad, and often you're just going to have to run your universal forwarders as root, which is why it's so important that you protect your deployment servers and other things so that they're not susceptible to pushing out bad stuff. Anyway, um, that's that would be all I have for there. We've got Splunk restarted. We can check the status, Splunk, Splunk bin, Splunk status and it's gonna tell me it's up and running. Cool. All right, I have pushed it to the deployment server. I know that I have a deployment.server.conf file that's pushing to my deployment server, so I should be joining it. I'm also forwarding logs there. So now we wanna go test and see if that's actually occurring. So I'm gonna jump onto my 1.119 machine here, and I'm gonna come into settings, forwarder management. And there is my Troy Dev machine, the 1.154 machine that I set up to uh, talk there, it is reporting in. And so that's, it's working exactly how I wanted it to go and we're good to go. And so we've got it joined to a forwarder, we've got it joined to a deployment server. I can actually see that logs should be coming in. Index equals internal because that's all I'm going to have. I haven't set it up to send any logs. Index equals internal, stat head 1000, stats count by host. I should have a few hosts here. And one of those should be interesting. At this stage, I don't have any internal logs from that machine. We're going to keep checking in every now and then, make sure we get some logs coming in. It may, there it is, there's my Troy dev. It, so logs are coming in from my dev box. We're good to go. 
I hope you'll keep tuning in We're, uh, and we'll now talk about how to use a deployment server to push out these very same configs. Hope you'll uh, join back uh, on this playlist and watch the rest of the videos.